This year, for Battle of the Classes Battling for a Cause, we are fundraising for Smile Train, a global organization, and Hagedorn Cleft Palate and Cranial Facial Center, which is a local organization based in New Hyde Park. Since 1999, Smile Train has focused on one serious but solvable problem providing the same opportunities to the millions of children around the world born with clefts as those born without. Using the Teach a Man to Fish model, we empower local doctors to perform cleft lip and palate repair surgery in their communities. The commitment of thousands of medical professionals makes it possible for Smile Train to train other doctors, creating a long-term, sustainable system. Through this effective approach, with roughly one surgery every five minutes performed by more than 2,100 local surgeons every year, Smile Train has quickly created more than one million beautiful smiles, making both these children's lives and our world a lot brighter. Smile Train. Changing the world one smile at a time. Gerard Ovasionado was born on January 5, 2016 with a cleft lip palate. This is a genetic complication that 1 in 650 babies are born with. My name is Walter Evasionada. I am a 2003 alumni of Carl Place High School. I'm currently a married with my wife Megan and my son Gerard, um, who was born with a cleft lip, bilateral cleft lip and palate. Cleft palate is basically an opening in the upper part of your mouth. So if you were to run your tongue against the top of your ma mouth, you would feel a hard part and then you would feel a soft part. Um, when there's a child that's born with a cleft palate, both of those um, things are open and they're not completely sealed. Um, for our, and, and there's other examples as well, there's a unilateral cleft lip 
where there's a cleft lip, a lip that's not sealed on one side. There's also a bilateral cleft lip, which Gerard was also born with, so he had um, both um, openings on the side and a uh, uh, premaxilla in the middle. Um, so basically, those are the, the brief types of uh, cleft palate. So basically, it's an opening in the mouth that's not sealed um, upon birth. The 20 week sonogram, um, when you go in, you're very happy and excited to see the baby, and then more and more doctors come in, and all of a sudden, um, your world changes in a, in a heartbeat. Then the next day, we were at doctor after doctor, going through all kinds of steps to make sure that everything else was okay because sometimes a, a cleft lip and power palate can lead to other um, genetic. Um, um, deformities that we're not sure of or other things that can happen. So uh, we found it about 20 weeks and 20 weeks and one day later we said this is this is our son and we were happy and we, we made it our cause kind of after that. Well when he called me and he told me and I saw how devastated he was. It was the first day. He called me and then um, he was very upset. Later, later on, they embrace it with all this love for the child. But for the love they have for the child, uh, it was terrible. I couldn't sleep that night. I think I was praying all night for his health and loving him, that little 20 week old little baby. Was my, who was my grandson? I think that I started to love him more and more and I knew that he was going to need all of us and his parents were going to need us. Um, when he was born, you know, plastic surgeons come in and out and, and probably 15, 20 doctors see him instantly. Um, he went right into the NICU, which was standard to make sure he was you know, breathing okay and, 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 and checking him out to see if anything else was going on. And then from there, um, every Thursday my wife uh, took him to Cohen's Children's Hospital in the orthodontic um, suite and he was fitted with a device called um, a NAM. And basically what that does is it covers the palate so that um, it grows on its own because it's still living tissue and everything kind of will start to close together. And also because he had a bilateral cleft lip, they also had to put um, uh, nasal prongs in and actually lower his premaxilla into position so his first corrective surgery, um, it's much easier for the plastic surgeon when you bring everything together. first surgery at um, five months and that was just to repair his lip and then um, the second surgery was um, almost at a year old and that's when they repaired his soft palate um, and they put what's called a fixed obturator and that's basically a um, basically what the NAM was but permanently fixed in with four screws so to let everything kind of grow closer together and then this past summer he had his final surgery for now uh, where they removed the fixed obturator and they um, closed the heart palate and it works beautifully. It's a be you can't even tell. It looks better than you know the average everyday palate. It's a, it's a work of art. And then his next surgery won't be until right before kindergarten where they'll take a piece of his hip bone 
and put it into his jaw because his um, the jaw lines are still clefted in the inside. And then they'll put the bone in, and then the teeth will grow, and then from there, braces and, and maybe another surgery after that. We don't know as many kids, it's not visible among us. And I was thinking, uh, you know, with all this, I wonder how many students had had a cleft lip and palate. How many? And uh, we never realized it. We just see like a little thing in the lip, but we take it for granted because they speak well, because they behave normally. But imagine if those children couldn't have the surgery, how terrible their lives could be. When you come from third world countries and you have seen them growing into men and women and they can hardly say a word, they are very nasal, they can hardly eat, and many of them don't get to the adult age because they don't have the nutrition, they don't have, uh, they cannot be fed accordingly. People make fun of them. They are victims of bullying. They are victims of, of society. I think it's awesome. Um, it's absolutely incredible that you guys are doing this because it's not a cause that is you know usually fundraised for, um, but it, it affects so many children. And you're giving you know opportunities galore to you know kids and out of the country um, with with Smile Train and even Hagador. And you're improving the lives of so many people. And you're relieving the stress of so many parents who you know, handle everything so differently. Um, and both of these organizations are just absolute wonderful gems, both, you know, for Smile Train out of the country and for Hagedorn, just, it's, it's a pride and joy of Long Island. And just how many people they help every year is absolutely incredible. Turn the crowd up.